Hello students, let us learn about the structural elucidation of sucrose. Definition Structural elucidation is the process of determining the chemical structure of a compound. For organic compounds, it will often involve the use of NMR spectroscopy. Sucrose is a disaccharide. It is made up of two monosaccharide units, glucose and fructose. So the first evidence that uh, sucrose is a disaccharide is when sucrose is hydrolyzed in presence of enzyme that is invertase, it gives rise to two monosaccharide unit, one being glucose and the second one being fructose. Both glucose and fructose are reducing sugar, whereas sucrose is non-reducing sugar. This is the structure of sucrose. So here we can see that it is made up of two monosaccharide unit, glucose and fructose, and it is having, and they they are linked by a glycosidic linkage. So here you we see at C one of glucose and C five of fructose, they are linked by a glycosidic linkage. So usually what happens is sucrose is why is it called as a non-reducing sugar is because of the carbonyl group which is not available for it to get reduced with uh, in presence of filing solution so that is the reason why we say that sucrose is a non reducing sugar it doesn't um, react with re filling uh, reagent because it is bonded with a glycosidic linkage at c5 of fructose so hence it becomes a non reducing sugar similarly even uh, for the fructose also at c5 even here we see it is bonded uh, with the c1 of the glucose and hence it is not available for it to it get to re get reduced in presence of failings solution so that's why sucrose becomes a non reducing sugar <coughs> so this is the second evidence that Sucrose neither reacts with phenylhydrazine nor reduces the failing solution, indicating that the carbonyl group of both monosaccharides involved in a linkage. So that is a just the explanation which I gave. So hence, sucrose is a, a non-reducing sugar because the, the carbonyl at both glucose and at the fructose carbonyl, the, both of them are linked by the gly, gly, glycosidic linkage, and hence they are not able to, that is the sucrose is not able to reduce the failing solution or the phenylhydrazine. The third evidence is that the identities of these products demonstrate that the glucose portion is a pyranocide that is 1 is to 5 linkage and that the fructose portion is a furanocide 2 is to 5 linkage. So this is the evidence. So here we can see, so this is a a sucrose unit okay and it is written in the open chain structure so this is not a, a usual uh, structure that is uh, what we write in the Havot structure so this is an open chain structure of sucrose wherein we see that uh, they are uh, suitably linked that is uh, we see this group here so this is at the c1 of the glucose and c5 of the fructose which is linked here Okay, and which is forming the open chain structure of the sucrose. So now the evidence that the sucrose is a disaccharide and that the glucose is a glycoside or sorry, it is a pyranose uh, ring structure and the fructose is a furanose structure, uh, ring structure. So the evidence for this is when the sucrose is made to react with a methylating agent, such as dimethyl sulfate. So dimethyl sulfate in presence of NaOH, okay? And dimethyl sulfate is a methylating agent. That is, it is going to methylate the hydroxyl units. Or in, or in other words, we can say that wherever there are hydroxyl units present in the sucrose, the hydrogen of the hydroxyl gets replaced by the methyl. So something to give rise to a methoxy group, okay? So this is the methylating agent, that is the dimethyl sulfate. A sulfate. So now, when the dimethyl sulfate in presence of NaOH reacts with the sucrose, we see here that 
the sucrose is going to form an octa o methyl sucrose so here if we have a close look at the structure 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 46 47 48 49 50 51 52 53 54 55 56 57 58 59 60 61 62 63 64 65 66 67 68 69 70 71 72 73 74 75 76 77 78 79 80 81 82 83 84 85 86 87 88 89 90 91 92 93 94 95 96 97 98 99 100 O methyl group and on the fructose unit we have one, two, three and four. So total number of the O methyl groups are going to be eight. So hence it is going to be called as the octa O methyl sucrose. So this is the main evidence to show that the glucose is bonded at one is to five linkage that is having a pyranose. structure and fructose is having 2 is to 5 linkage that is nothing but a furanose structure so this is the main evidence okay wherein it shows that so at, at these uh, positions wherein it is forming an o methyl sucrose indicates this is the main indication to say that glucose is a pyranose structure and fructose is a furanose structure which is having the furanose is having 2 is to 5 linkage and the uh, so the furanose is having 2 is to 5 and the pyranose is having 1 is to 5 linkage okay so this is how the uh, this is the indication to show that sucrose is having these uh, monosaccharides unit which is linked okay now this on further hydrolysis and in presence of dilute hcl is going to get hydrolyzed into two fragments one is going to be 2 3 4 6 tetra o methyl d glucose and 1 3 4 6 tetra o methyl d fructose so this is the main two fragments which indicate that the sucrose is a disaccharide which is made up of two monosaccharides unit glucose and fructose and this 2 3 4 6 tetra o methyl in uh, glucose indicates that the glucose is having a pyranose structure and 1 3 4 6 tetra o methyl d fructose indicates that furan uh, that the fructose is a furanose ring structure which is having the 1 uh, 2 is to 5 linkage okay the next evidence for the sucrose unit or to confirm the structure of sucrose is the per iodic acid method when sucrose is treated with 3 moles of per iodic acid 1 mole of formic acid and 1 mole of tetra aldehydes are formed the latter compound that is the tetra aldehyde on oxidation with bromine water followed by acid hydrolysis yields a mixture of glyoxylic acid glyceric acid and hydroxypyruvic acid so per iodic acid is a um, oxidizing agent and it is used to understand the structure of sucrose so what is the main purpose of per iodic acid so here students this is again a structure of the sucrose okay and the molecular formula of per iodic acid is h5io6 also it is also written as hio4 okay so this is also the structure a molecular formula of per, per iodic acid so the main the main use of per iodic acid or the main strategy used by the per iodic acid is it is going to look at the carbon carbon bond or it is going to create a breakage between carbon carbon bo bonds which are linked to the hydroxyl always remember that okay so here when you look at this uh, sucrose unit so let us first identify the carbon carbon bonds which are linked to the hydroxyl so one carbon carbon bond which is linked so this is the carbons right so i mean to say this is the carbon which is linked to the hydroxyl and another carbon which is linked to the hydroxyl so this became one okay that is the one per iodic acid is used to break these two bonds okay next another acid another carbon carbon bonds which are going to get broken in presence of this per iodic acid is going to be this okay so here you see there are two so th this means that we need two moles of per iodic acid so these 1 2 and 3 4 okay so this two carbon bonds or carbon carbon bonds are broken 
because both of these carbon carbon bonds you see they are bonded to the hydroxyl units because okay, so now now two moles are required now the third one is going to be provided at the fructose so here we see there's one hydroxyl carbon atom bonded to hydroxyl and another carbon atom bonded to hydroxyl so this is the third carbon carbon bond which is going to be broken so that is the reason why usually in the whenever we are making use of the per iodic acid method to determine the structure of sucrose there's always indication of 3 moles of sucrose unit sorry 3 moles of per iodic acid which is required to break the bond so this is the main uh, work of the per iodic acid that is it is always going to look at the carbon carbon bonds which are bonded to the hydroxyl so that is why we see at this carbon junction at at this and at this so there are three carbon units which are going to be broken down by the per iodic acid so once it breaks what is going to happen is it is going to give rise to aldehyde groups okay so that is the reason why the sucrose units are broken down by three moles so that is why here it is indicated as three moles of per iodic acid are required to break the carbon carbon bonds and it is going to give rise to the aldehyde so here we see the tetra aldehydes are formed after the per iodic acid reacts with these hydroxyl units of the sucrose and it is going to give rise to the tetra aldehydes and in presence of the and also it is going to give rise to the formic acid next the latter uh, compound that is the tetra aldehyde on reaction with bromine water and on further hydrolysis it is going to give rise to the acid uh, that is the glyoxylic glyceric and hydroxy pyruvic acid so bromine water we know it is a very good oxidizing agent so it is going to oxidize the aldehyde groups at the these uh, four that is the four aldehydic groups it is going to oxidize them to give rise to the respective acids so it is going to be the glyoxylic acid and glyceric acid and hydroxy pyruvic acid so these three fragments was um, were they were able to isolate these three fragments and this gave us an indication that the structure of sucrose is nothing but it is a disaccharide and it is made up of two monosaccharides that is glucose and fructose so this uh, concludes the structural elucidation of sucrose thank you very much